Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course to learn how to model loads on concrete slab systems in RAM Concept. In this series of videos, we will show you how to create load cases and load combinations in RAM Concept. We will show you how to model area, line, and point loads. And we will also show you how to model load patterns. For each available load case in the RAM Concept model, Loading can be applied as an area load, line load, perimeter line load, or as a point load. When modeling your loading, you must first start by defining the load magnitude, and this can be done by double-clicking on the appropriate load icon. In the default load properties dialog, you can then enter the elevation of the load and the load magnitudes, magnitude in terms of forces and moments as needed. When entering the load magnitude, it is important to enter the value using the correct signs. In RAM concept, the z-axis is vertical, and a positive load would point down by default. For this model, we are going to begin by modeling the live unreducible loading, so we must first access that particular layer. We can do this by selecting the Layers menu item, select the Loadings option, and then we will navigate to the appropriate load case. For this example, we'll use the Live Unreducible Loading layer, and then we'll select the All Loads plan. To begin, we will start by modeling our area loads. So we'll go over to our Layer Specific Toolbar and find our Area Loads icon. We will double-click on this icon to first define the load magnitude. Here we will enter the elevation above the slab surface, which will leave at 0 inches, and we will be modeling a 50 PSF downward acting load. So we will enter positive 50 PSF in the FZ field, and then we will click OK. Now in the active window, we are ready to start modeling our area load. And for this model, we will model 50 PSF live load across the entire floor system. So we will draw a box around the entire slab by clicking at the corners, and then we will return to our starting location. Now RAM Concept will automatically trim the load to the edge of slab here, so we can model our load outside the slab extents. Now we will also assume that these small areas of slab depressions need to have a larger live load. In fact, they need to have 100 PSF for this sample structure. Now, RAM concept area loads are additive, so in order to apply an additional 50 PSF load in this particular area, we can just draw a box here. Now, to make the modeling of the loads a little easier, we will go up to our Snap toolbar, and we'll click on our Snap to Intersection tool. Once that is selected, we will now draw a box around this slab depression and similarly one on the other side. Now for this model, the majority of the slab has 50 PSF live load on it, and these small areas would have 100 PSF live load. After you create any of the loadings on your model, you can also modify the magnitudes if you wish. To do that, you can select your loading, and then just right click to say Selection Properties. This will allow you to modify any of the parameters including the load magnitude. Next we will model some line loads. So over in our layer specific toolbar we will find our line load icon. And we will go ahead and double click on this tool so we can enter the load magnitude. For this model we will assume that we are going to apply one kip per foot in the Z direction so we'll enter that value here, and then we'll go ahead and click OK. Then in the active window, we are able to start modeling this load. So I'll click on this column up here, and then again down here to model a line load spanning between this column and this one, basically right on top of this concrete beam. And we'll repeat this process for the other concrete beams as well.
Next we will model some point loads. Now the point loads that we will use for this particular model are occurring at some grid intersection, but actually no RAM concept column is currently modeled at that location. Now to create this model we did import a CAD drawing from AutoCAD and MicroStation and we do have grid lines located there which will help us locate this point load on our slab system. In order to turn on any objects from another layer such as your drawing import layer, we will go up to our standard toolbar and click on the visible objects icon. Here we will select the drawing import tab and then we will select the grid layer. Basically all of the grids that were modeled in that CAD drawing were modeled on a grid layer. Then we will click OK. And now we can see our grids on screen. And we'll be modeling these point loads at grid intersection D2 and also D8. Now we are ready to start modeling our point loads, so we will go ahead and double click on our point load icon. In the default point load properties dialog, we will enter a magnitude of the load and we will enter five kips in the positive Z direction for loads, which is a downward acting load. Then we will go ahead and click OK. And then we'll click on grid intersection D2 and also D8. Now in RAM concept, point loads and line loads are independent of the finite element mesh and have actually no effect on the automatic mesh generation. Now for this particular sample structure, we located some point loads in the field of the slab, basically not at any location where we already have a column. If we were to mesh this slab right now in its current state, this point load would not necessarily coordinate with a node of our finite element mesh, and it would be best practice to locate this load at a mesh node. To ensure that this can happen for heavy point loads, you should model some pinned columns above the floor at the same location to ensure that the loads are located at finite element mesh nodes. The same could be said for line loads where you can model a pinned wall above the slab to have the same effect. To model these columns, we will go up to our Layers menu item, select the Mesh Input Plan, and then we'll select the Standard Plan. The Mesh Input Layer is where all of the structural objects are created and all of these objects will be used when generating the finite element mesh. Again, on this layer, I will go ahead and turn on those grid lines to help me in modeling those columns. To create those columns, I will go ahead and double click on the column icon. I will set the support set to above. I will enter a very small value for the size of the column. And I will make sure that it is a pinned column. Once I've entered all of my default column properties, I can go ahead and click OK. And then I can click on grid intersection D2 and D8. Now we will go ahead and regenerate the finite element mesh by clicking on the Generate Mesh icon from the standard toolbar. I will select an element size of 3 feet and then I'm going to go ahead and click on the Generate button. After the finite element mesh is created, I can go to the Layers Element Plan and now I can see that those point loads will be located at a finite element mesh node. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.